Aloha, Gen Cam One. How are you doing? In this video, I'd like to cover reaction stoichiometry, which is probably the main topic of Chapter Four. Although Chapter Four has a lot of topics, stoichiometry is uh, one of the big ones. So you can see the breakdown for Chapter Four in Tro's textbook. We'll cover 4.2 and 4.3 in this uh, little lecture. And in the next lecture, we'll cover uh, section 4.4, which deals with solution concentrations and solution stoichiometry. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do any other lectures for chapter four at this time. I'll try to, but I'd like to do a homework video where we hit some of the homework problems. And so that's coming uh, next after these after these two. So in this one 4.2 and 4.3 So Let's get to it All right now in chapter 4 I think the main focus of this chapter is reaction stoichiometry and What this word means it's a nasty looking word if you break it down into its two uh, parts, stoichion, which comes from the Greek word, and here's the Greek spelling for it, <laughs> if you read Greek, uh, sigma, tau, etc., 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 and nu. Um, anyway, stoichion means a principal substance, element, a first substance, a simple substance, so that's stoichion. And metron, uh, here's the Greek spelling for metron, means to measure or amount. And so the word stoichiometry concerns the amount of substances that react. And that's what reaction stoichiometry deals with. Uh, you know, the amounts of substances that react in a chemical reaction. So let's take a look at a simple chemical reaction. Uh, which is the combustion of methane right here. Now, this reaction um, is balanced. So if I were to interpret this, uh, I would say one mole of methane gas reacts with two moles of oxygen gas to produce two moles of water vapor and one mole of carbon dioxide gas. So that would be a, an interpretation. Now, the coefficients 1, 2, 2, 1 within this chemical equation uh, tell us the stoichiometric relations. So the coefficients 1, 2, 2, 1 mean that whenever one mole of methane reacts, two moles of oxygen also must react. And also, two moles of water are produced and one mole of CO2 is produced. So I like to think of these as like a, you know, they're all equivalent. Whenever this happens, that happens, that happens, and that happens. Or whenever two moles of water are produced, if you're talking about this chemical reaction, that means one mole of CO2 is produced. And that also means two moles of oxygen must have reacted and one mole of CH4 must have reacted. So built right within the chemical equation, we have lots of relations. And from these relations, we can uh, use them to predict how much uh, reactants and products are supposed to react. So for instance, suppose five moles of methane reacts according to the equation above, then how many moles of water are produced? Okay, a simple question. Um, now, from the equation, one mole of methane reacting means two moles of water are produced. So if five moles of methane reacts, well, for every single one of those five moles, you're going to get two moles of water. So you might be able to guess that the answer is going to be 10 moles of water because every single one of the methane moles yields two water moles, okay? But the way you want to demonstrate this in order to be clear 
is uh, by the following uh, calculation. We know that from the equation, one mole of methane reacting means two moles of water are produced. So we can use this relation between those two to convert from moles of methane to moles of water. And this is how you uh, uh, would show it uh, nice and neatly. So you take your five moles of methane and you know that one mole of methane equals two moles of water. So you use this equality to build your conversion factor and then the moles of methane cancels and you're left with moles of water as your unit and then the numbers multiply together to be uh, 10. Okay, so the answer is 10 moles of water. And I would call this the theoretical yield. Okay, we haven't done the experiment, but uh, you know, theoretically, if you react five moles of methane, you ought to get 10 moles of water, okay? And we can do other calculations because after all, there are lots of stoichiometric relations in this chemical equation. We have four chemicals involved. So let's take a look at another example. Suppose 10 moles of methane react, how many moles of oxygen also react. This time we're interested in the relation between methane and oxygen. And again, the ratio is one to two. So if you're reacting 10 moles of methane, let me uh, clear this up a little bit. If you're reacting 10 moles of methane, then 20 moles of water I'm, I'm sorry, 20 moles of oxygen uh, must also react because for every one of the methane moles, uh, it requires two moles of oxygen. So if you have 10 methanes, then you need 20 oxygens, okay? It's a one to two relation. But the way you can demonstrate that nice and neatly is by using this relation between methane and oxygen, okay? So one mole of methane equals two moles of oxygen that lets us convert between methane and oxygen. And here you go. You take your 10 moles of methane, you turn this relation into the conversion factor. The methane moles cancel, and you're left with oxygen moles. And so those are your units. And then the numbers multiply together to give you 20 moles. All right? So not too bad. And that would uh, be how much oxygen is expected to react with that much methane. Now, when we do experiments in the laboratory, we rarely uh, weigh out a certain number of moles. We always have uh, a mass balance that we're using. So typically we're interested in grams of substances. So how can we uh, do reaction stoichiometry problems when grams are involved or masses? So let's take a look. We'll stick with our uh, methane combustion reaction. And this time, um, suppose 10 grams of methane reacts, how much in grams of water are produced? And here, uh, we maybe need to uh, mention that we're assuming we have enough oxygen around for all of this methane to react. Okay, so 10 grams of methane reacts. There's enough oxygen for all of this stuff to completely combust. All right, so we're not, um, you know, smothering the gas from reacting. You have enough air or enough oxygen available. So uh, there's excess reactant. We're going to assume excess uh, oxygen, okay, to react with the methane. Now, when we're going from methane to water, from the equation, we know that one mole of methane yields two moles of water, okay? So if we want to figure out how much water is produced, we need to figure out how many moles of methane we have. Then one of these moles gives us two of those moles. So then we can convert to water. So in order to turn our grams of methane into moles, remember we need the molar mass. And for 
Uh, methane, the molar mass is 16.04 grams per mole. And we'll also need the molar mass for water, um, and that's 18.02 uh, grams per mole. Okay. Now, let's take a look at uh, the relations that we have at our disposal. We're trying to get from, uh, you know, we have this many grams of methane reacting, and we want to know how many grams of water are being produced. Okay. Well, the molar mass lets us convert from grams of methane to moles of methane. And the stoichiometry of the equation, which is a one to two relation, lets us go from moles of methane to moles of water. And then the molar mass of water lets us go from moles of water to grams of water. Now check each one of these relations and make sure that you understand why the left side of the equation equals the right side. Okay, so we have three equations or three relations right here, and in each case, the left side equals the right side. All right, and this is the molar mass, this is the stoichiometry, and this one is the molar mass of water. So we can use these three relations to build three conversion factors in a row. All right, there, are, remember, conversion factors are like fancy looking ones where the, the numerator is the same as the denominator. And so uh, multiplying by a conversion factor, uh, you know, is like multiplying by one. So you take your 10 grams of methane, convert it to moles, convert moles of methane to moles of water, moles of water to grams of water. And you can see the units canceling in each case, and you're left with units of grams of water. And then the numbers multiply together to give you 22.46 grams of water. So this would be the theoretical yield of water that's produced if 10 grams of methane react. So that would round to 22.5 grams of water. Now, the next problem is called the limiting reactant problem. And let's have a look at this. It looks very similar to the last problem that we just did. Suppose 10 grams of methane reacts with 10 grams of oxygen. Okay, now this time, instead of assuming excess oxygen, we're only going to give it 10 grams of oxygen. So we have 10 grams of methane and 10 grams of oxygen. Let's, let's just look at the last problem. Okay, suppose 10 grams of methane reacts how much water is produced, and we're assuming excess oxygen is available, but this time, suppose 10 grams of methane reacts with 10 grams of oxygen, and, and I guess I need to say what the question is, how much water is produced? So that's the question, how much in grams H2O is produced? All right, so you see the difference? In the first problem, we assumed excess oxygen is available. So we turned our 10 grams of methane using three conversion factors into grams of water. Now in the second problem, we have some methane and we have some oxygen. Now I pulled these numbers out of the hat. When you just have a certain amount of methane and a certain amount of oxygen, chances are they're probably not perfectly uh, measured in order that both of them fully react. You remember, uh, for, every, uh, for every molecule of methane, you need two molecules of oxygen. That would be a perfect reaction if you have two molecules of oxygen for every molecule of methane. Now chances are, if we count up the molecules of methane and the molecules of oxygen, you're not gonna have perfectly twice as many molecules of oxygen. Or if you're counting by moles, you would need uh, twice as many moles of these versus moles of methane because of the one to two relation. So one of these guys is gonna run out and uh, it's our job to figure out which one um, you have uh, 
too much of, which one is excess, and which one you don't have enough of. Which one, uh, the one that you don't have enough of is going to limit how much product is produced. And so one of these is gonna be called the limiting reactant, and the other one is gonna be excess. And I'm not sure, um, well, uh, we're not sure which one it is yet until we uh, solve the problem. So this is called the limiting reactant problem, all right? Now, a good way to approach the limiting reactant problem when you have this situation is to just do two calculations. So in the first calculation, we're just going to assume all of the methane does react. So assume all of the 10 grams of methane reacts. Now, it doesn't mean that it has to. Let's just assume that it does. And in the second calculation, we'll assume all of the, the other reactant reacts. So we'll do the one we'll do the calculation twice and it turns out that one of the answers is going to be the right answer. So let's see how this goes. Now if the 10 grams of methane fully reacts, we just solved this problem. If 10 grams of methane fully reacts, you get your 22.46 grams of water. It was a three conversion process. So I just copied down the same uh, calculation right here. Okay, 10 grams of methane, go from grams to moles, moles of methane, moles of water, uh, and then moles of water back to grams of water. And so that's 22.5, uh, remember around 22.5 grams of water. So we do the same thing for oxygen, uh, 10 grams of oxygen. Now the molar mass of oxygen is 32 grams. You have two oxygens, so each one is 16. So uh, you know, one mole is 32 grams. So you convert grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen. And to go from moles of oxygen to moles of water, this is a two to two relation be this time, because in the equation, you have two moles of oxygen yield two moles of water. So two to two this time, okay? Um, two moles of oxygen give you two moles of water, and then go from moles of water back to grams of water. And doing that, you can see how the units cancel off to give you grams of water. And then the numbers multiply together to give you 5.63. Now it turns out that the smaller number is the correct answer. So this is our theoretical yield of water. The reason that it's the smaller one is because when all of the oxygen runs out, you have formed that much water we cannot continue to form any more water after that because you only have enough oxygen to get this much. Once this much water is formed, your oxygen is done. However, methane, on the other hand, 10 grams of methane is enough to give you 22.5 grams of water. So you have enough methane to get 22.5 grams of water, but you only have enough oxygen to give you 5.63 grams of water. And so, uh, this is how much water is going to be formed, and we would call the oxygen the limiting reactant, and the methane is an excess. All right. Now let's do one more example of the limiting reactant problem. So I got this problem from another uh, textbook, and it reads, when benzene, C6H6, reacts with bromine, Br2, bromobenzene, C6H5Br, is obtained. And here is the equation. C6H6, liquid, benzene, reacts with bromine, liquid, to form bromobenzene, liquid, and uh, hydrogen bromide uh, gas. It bubbles out of the, the liquid once these react. Now, I've drawn the uh, molecular Lewis structures for each of these uh, compounds. So this is something we'll get to in uh, chapter nine, but it's kind of cool to, to see what molecules uh, look like, how the atoms are attached. So that's what Lewis structures are. They show you which atoms are attached to which. So carbon, uh, you know, there's six carbons attached together in a ring with single and double bonds alternating around the ring, and each carbon is also single bonded to a hydrogen. Now, the molar mass of benzene is 78.11 grams per mole. Okay, and you can see that 
after the reaction, one of the bromines takes the place of one of the hydrogens, and the other bromine attaches to the hydrogen that was removed from the ring. So I've written the molar masses of uh, the rest of the compounds as well. Okay, now the question for this reaction, when 30 grams of benzene reacts with 65 grams of bromine, what is the theoretical yield of bromobenzene? So again, we have a certain amount of both of the reactants. So the two reactants are benzene and bromine. You have 30 grams of benzene and 65 grams of bromine. So here are the two reactants again, benzene and bromine. Now, one of these is gonna run out. It's gonna limit the amount of product that's formed, and the other one will be in excess. So uh, it's not obvious which one runs out and which one is in excess. You know, it, just because you have 30 grams of benzene doesn't automatically mean that one runs out. Okay, so it depends on the stoichiometry and it also depends on the molar masses, okay? So in order to solve the problem, let's just do the calculation twice like we did before. So in the first step, we assume all of the benzene reacts. So you take your 30 grams of benzene and using the molar mass of benzene right here, you convert grams to moles and then using the stoichiometry of the problem, which is a one to one relation. We're going from benzene to bromobenzene. One mole of benzene gives us one mole of bromobenzene. And then go to grams of bromobenzene. One mole of bromobenzene is 157.02 grams. That's a molar mass of bromobenzene. And so you can see the units are gonna cancel to give you uh, 60.3 grams of bromobenzene. Now, let's assume all of the other reactants reacts. So you take your 65 grams of bromine, you convert grams to moles using the molar mass of uh, bromine, and then one mole of bromine also yields one mole of bromobenzene because that's a one to one relation all the coefficients are one this time, so that makes it nice. So one mole of bromine yields one mole of bromobenzene, and then one mole of bromobenzene is 157.02 grams again. And so all the units cancel grams, grams, moles, 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 bromobenzene, moles, bromobenzene, and then you're left with grams, bromobenzene, and the numbers give you 63.8 or 63.9 grams of bromobenzene. And when you look at these two, this number is slightly smaller. And so uh, that's the theoretical yield of the bromobenzene product. And so we should call the 30 grams of benzene, the limiting uh, reactant here, and then the bromine would be in excess. Now, there is a small part B to this problem. If the actual yield of bromobenzene is 42.3 grams, what is the percentage yield? What this is talking about is when you go and do reactions in the laboratory, rarely do you collect all of the product that you expect to collect. So we just calculated that Theoretically, we should get 60.3 grams of product, okay? Now, when you do the reaction in the lab, uh, you lose some product, some of it stays you know, in solution, or some of it evaporates, or you spill a beaker, or whatever the reason, you hardly ever will get 100% of what you expect. And so what the percentage yield is asking is what percentage did you get, okay? So suppose we actually collected 42.3 grams. So this would be our actual yield versus our theoretical yield of 60.3. The percentage yield would be actual yield over theoretical yield times 100%. And so when we plug in the numbers for the actual and the theoretical, we uh, get 
0, 1 4 times 100. That's the fraction of what we should have gotten. So to convert it to percentage, it's 70.1%. So 70.1% yields. And uh, that's pretty good uh, little lecture on reaction stoichiometry. When we do solutions in our next little video where we talk about solution concentrations, we'll revisit reaction stoichiometry again, but in a different form. We'll be talking about um, if you have a reaction taking place in solution, um, well, uh, how do you deal with uh, solution concentrations and how do you do reaction stoichiometry when they're involved? Okay, so stay tuned for the next little lecture on section 4.4 and I will see you next time. Aloha.